got John on the show. There he First is. First of all, congratulations yes. on the gig. You must be so excited. We were just saying it feels like Seattle. Everything they do is so exciting. Their video <laughs> packages, their logo, their colors, yeah, yeah. their Twitter. It's like everything is just sunshine and rainbows. Coming up Seattle cracking. Tracking. How pumped are you to be a part of this? Yeah, everything's good, Jackie, until now, now that they've hired me, right? Oh, but, uh, oh, I'm just going to say great to see you and EJ and Dano. Let's go. Get yourself out to Seattle. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm, hey, listen, guys, I'm, I'm overjoyed. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't be? You know, I get an opportunity as a play-by-play -play guy to do this for the second time. And I mean, start from ground zero, start from the bottom uh, with a franchise and Mark all these moments in time hopefully for a long time a uh, great opportunity and i'm absolutely thrilled and it's got to be even better to be joining someone out there in ron francis that you know so well that's a world-class guy and that's yeah. got that probably had to figure in or factor into this somewhere for you well here's why ej because when it all went down negatively in raleigh and my deal was up on july 1st the first phone call i got was from ron francis and he didn't call me about this job. He called me about how I was, my well-being, my family, and all those things, and how I was going through that ordeal. Um, as you know, he's a Hall of Fame player, Hall of Fame person, and I think the person aspect of this is most important. And so that meant a lot to me, and then he hooked me up with Todd Lywicki, who's doing a remarkable job running the entire show out there in Seattle. We had a conversation and it went on for a few months. Uh, they finally solidified a rights deal and in and around the holidays, they presented me with an opportunity of a lifetime. So I'm, I'm over the top over this. John, I know you were just recently hired, but obviously uh, got the call from Ron Francis and had a conversation and the wheels uh, started in motion, but this Seattle Kraken team seems like they've been around forever. How anxious, what's <laughs> the temperature there for them to get going? Because there's been a lot of hard work put in by everybody, the front office, and now you're part of uh, the broadcast. Well, we're, we're going to make it America's team, Dan. We'll find out, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, listen, they have done a tremendous job with the, the buildup. You look at the amount of season tickets that have been sold. The waiting list is over 60,000 for season tickets. Uh, the arena is going to be a, a carbon zero facility, the first of its kind. Uh, the uniforms, the colors, the name, everything has been intriguing so far. And it's way different than 97 when we moved in four months from Hartford to Raleigh. Mm did not have the platforms that we have today, social media wise, marketing wise, but the, the organization that's that's on the ground floor in Seattle, they've done a great job building up all the energy. They even make me look okay, which uh, <laughs> is not easy to do. You mean they're not driving back and forth from Greensboro to Raleigh? I mean, that's that's, no. that's not gonna be part of this, huh? No, we're okay. not, and we're not taking Richard Petty, to my knowledge, you know, into the <laughs> building or, or anything like that, but. <laughs> It'll be a totally different vibe. But you know what? Uh, look what happened in Raleigh, right? That's the right, Caniacs yep. and, and all of that and the identity that team's been able to forge. And now I regard them as, as I know you guys do, one of the elite teams in the league. Uh, the same thing has to happen with the Kraken. You have to develop a fan base. I just want to go out there and build a trust with them and, and see where it goes. And again, I'm getting a, a second chance to do this. I'm very lucky. Hey, John, you uh, you have been doing games, though. Obviously, you did games in the return to play with NBC Sports Network. You're doing a game actually tonight, the Blackhawks and the Nashville Predators. How has it been for you calling these games under different circumstances? Sometimes you're there. A lot of times you're on the monitor now. How has that been going? It's okay. It's it's not the best situation, obviously, to do it off the monitor, but I'm not alone. Everyone around the league is doing this, EJ, and they're doing a really good job with it. Uh, we started opening night in the arena at Amelie Arena for uh, Tampa Bay's opening ceremony, and that was uh, that was great to be there for that. We did the first Sunday, Brian Boucher, Eddie Olchek, and myself from Pittsburgh. That's the only two times I've been in the rink. Everything else has been here out of Stanford. Tonight, I'm here. Uh, Edzo will be from his house, so hopefully he doesn't go to the fridge, you know, midway through the second period. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but it, it, it's a challenge. It, it's not ideal. Uh, Dano can tell you a lot of the stuff is out of frame. You can't see the officials all the time. I'm guessing on crossbars and goal posts and things that you usually have confidence as an announcer. Uh, you, you don't have it under these circumstances. But 
it is what it is, as they say, and we have to do this for our fans and make sure that we're top notch so they enjoy the games. Well, you can't tell. You're doing a, a heck of a That's job right. every time you're on the call. And for any hockey fans out in Seattle that are anxiously awaiting their team, you can hear the future voice of the Kraken tonight. That's Hawks correct. spread, 7.30 yeah. Eastern congrats, time. John. Yes. John, congrats again. Thanks for taking time to chat with us. We appreciate it. I'm on one-day deals. I get renewed every day at 5 o'clock, so take care. I might call you guys. All right. Hey, what? you're a, you're a godsend. Just remember that. So are you, big oh, guy. So no, are no, you. No, you are. One